good afternoon everyone a warm warm welcome to you all of our to our earnings conference call to discuss the business performance of dil for the third quarter and nine months of the financial year 2023-24 <coughs> at the outset i feel very excited to share with you all that we have successfully completed the acquisition of restaurants development company limited rd one of the franchise partners of kfc in thailand this has led to addition to a or uh, addition of 283 kfc stores as of december 31st and 2 274 stores as of december as uh, uh, september 30th <coughs> to to our overall store portfolio we have also maintained the store expansion free space for dil we opened 94 new net new stores in quarter 3 across our brand portfolio with this we have added 209 net new stores in the 9 months period taking the total store count to 1452 as at december 31st with the thailand acquisition our total store count now stands at 1735 please note that Th the thailand deal was completed in january 2024 we are making steady progress in investing in our core brands and expanding our reach to cover our target consumers to capitalize on the growth potential in india we are now present in more than 250 cities in india the consolidated revenue for dil stood at 843 crores for the quarter with a growth of 6.6% on a year to year basis <clears throat> over the same period our largest business dil india witness a growth of 9.2% from april to december cumulative 9 months of the year the consolidated revenue was 2509 crores with a growth of 11.9% over the same period of the previous year consumer consumer sentiment remains subdued despite quarter 3 tradition traditionally being a strong and festive quarter we have also seen the impact of certain international geopolitical events on the american brands that we deal with the nigerian currency continues to weaken post a significant devaluation couple of quarters back again impacting the current results of dil overall we believe that we have the weak consumer sentiment and depressed summer sense spending is temporary and short lived and we are optimistic about witnessing a recovery over the next few quarters amid these challenges our operating and financial performances has remained stable and we continue to invest in the business for long term growth to successful navigate the dynamic and evolving qsr landscape we have implemented multiple initiatives this year including optimizing menu pricing reducing wastage enhancing cost controls and improving operational efficiency to sum up our store additional strategy stands as a testament to our belief in the long term potential of our indian qsr industry as we actively grow our presence we are <coughs> strategically positioned to tap into this vast opportunity ensuring sustainable growth and value creation for our stakeholders we are on track to inaugurate 250 to 275 new outlets in the current fiscal year this ambition expansion coupled with our commitment to customer satisfaction and innovation positions us for success in the ever changing qsr sector <clears throat> we had previously set ourselves an ambitious goal of reaching 2000 stores by 2026 you will be happy to note that following the completion of the thailand acquisition we are confident of achieving this major milestone by the end of the calendar year 2024 with this i would like to conclude my address 
and I now hand over to Manish for the financial highlights. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jaipuria. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome and thank you for your valuable time for attending the Air's Q3 FI24 earnings conference call, our 10th call since the listing in August 21. In quarter 3 FI24, we opened 94 net new stores across our brand portfolio. We now have a footprint of 1,371 stores across our four brands, with a total store count of 1,452 stores across DL. This consists of 647 stores for KFC, 570 stores for Pizza Hut, and 154 stores for Costa Coffee in our portfolio, as at the end of quarter 3 FY24. Our store distribution in India continues to remain marginally in favor of non-metro destinations, at 52% of the total core store count. We have added seven new cities in quarter three. As Mr. Jaipuri alluded earlier, having completed the Thailand acquisition, our total store count now stands at 1735 stores as at December end. As a result of this acquisition, the total store count for KFC stands at 930 stores out of the total store portfolio that we have. Having announced the transaction in December 23, we completed the Thailand acquisition as of 17th January 24, and we will start consolidating the Thailand numbers from quarter four of FY2324. Therefore, next quarter, you will see Thailand getting consolidated for approximately two and a half months. We see Thailand as a great opportunity market for DIL. Apart from KFC, we do see the potential to introduce new brands from our existing portfolio over a period of time. The existing Thailand business and the team provides us with a strong foundation from that perspective. Coming back, the operating revenues for quarter 3 FY24 stood at 843 crores, representing a 6.6% year-on-year increase. This was supported by new store openings. The Indian business witnessed a growth of 9.2% over the same period of the previous financial year. The October-December quarter saw a subdued sentiment within the FMCG stock mass uh, discretionary consumer sector, marked by a visible pullback in consumer spending. This period, traditionally buoyed by festival spending, saw some contraction in consumer enthusiasm, reflecting broader economic concerns and a cautious approach to mass discretionary spending. The impact of this cautiousness extended beyond traditional retail and included the QSR sector as well. We have also seen a strong correlation of some of the international geopolitical events on our business because of some large American brands that we partner with. Post a strong currency devaluation in quarter one, the Nigerian Naira has seen further deterioration and further weakening. As you all know, Nigeria is a highly import dependent economy, and the currency impact has resulted in a contraction in the local spending power and consumption. As a result of this, we have seen an all round impact on our Nigerian business performance as far as the revenue and the margins are concerned. The currency impact, because of the restatement of dollar denominated liabilities, has been captured as part of pre index beta, and the same has affected the DL consolidated results as well. As we stated earlier, we have to support Nigeria business financially given the local situation for the next couple of years until the local situation stabilizes. The gross margin for the consolidated business was flat on a quarter on quarter basis and improved by almost 130 basis points over the year on year quarter. However, the deleverage in top line as a result of lower radius numbers across KFC and Pizza Hut has led to the impact on brand contribution margins. The brand contribution in quarter three stood at 15.4% flat versus the previous quarter. Reported EBITDA, which is post index for quarter three for the current financial year was 146 crores with the, with the margins at 17.4% versus rupees 159 crores in the previous quarter. Consolidated operating EBITDA on a pre index basis was rupees 79 crores versus rupees 95 crores in the previous quarter. Operating EBITDA margin at 9.3% for the quarter was lower by 2.2% on a quarter on quarter basis. This is mainly on account of the booking of forex loss as a result of the further weakening of Nigerian currency and the ADSD leverage impact. Taking the discussion to our core brands, KFC in India added 50 new stores in quarter FY24 reaching a total store count of 590 stores as at the end of the quarter. Average daily sales for quarter three FY24 was Rs. 104,000 versus Rs. 109,000 in the previous quarter. Revenues at Rs. 524 crores grew 14.1% on a year-on-year basis. 
Gross margin for KFC at 69.4% improved by 40 basis points over the previous quarter. Brand contribution margins at 19% for the current quarter was lower by 0.4% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, mainly due to daily average arising out of the lower ADS. On-premise consumption was 60% versus 61% was 60% versus 61% in the previous quarter. During the quarter, Pizza had added 30 new stores. Revenue at 180 crores was lower by 2.2% on year-on-year -year basis. ADS was rupees 37,000 versus 39,000 in the previous quarter. Gross margins for the quarter came in at 75.8% flat versus the previous quarter. Brand contribution was rupees 11 crores for the quarter with margins of 6.1%, which was lower by 1.6% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, mainly due to ADS delivery impact. Costa Coffee added eight new stores during the quarter, reaching a cumulative store count of 154 stores as of 31st December 23. Quarter 3 FY24 revenue was at to be 40 crores with a growth of 14.6% on quarter-on-quarter -on -quarter basis and 36.4% on year-on-year -year basis, driven by expansion of new stores. Gross margin was 77.2%, improvement of 0.9% versus the previous quarter. Quarter 3, FY24 brand contribution stood at 14.9%. As you all know, the new stores take some time to stabilize and reach their maturity level. Hence, the rapid expansion of Costa stores has impacted the overall brand performance. We, we expect this to stabilize as we go along. To conclude, we want to reiterate our commitment to our ambitious growth within the Indian QSR market. We have set a target of reaching 2,000 stores by 2026, a milestone that signifies uh, the tremendous potential and demand for our brands. With high acquisition, we will be able to meet this target by end of calendar year 2024. The Thailand acquisition will result in external debt in the books of DIL. On a consolidated level, the Thailand debt will also get consolidated once we start to consolidate the, consolidate the balance sheet as we, as we consolidate the numbers from next quarter. The gearing ratio remains in a comfortable zone despite Thailand acquisition and consolidation. As we continue to expand, we remain committed to improving our financial performance, reflecting our emphasis on prudent financial management and creating long-term value for our shareholders. On that note, I would like to request the moderator to open the forum for any questions or suggestions that you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets only while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. <laughs> The first question is from the line of Vivek Maheshwari from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening, team. Uh, first question is on Pizza Hut. Given you know where uh, the brand is in uh, in its journey, uh, a buy buy or a quarter quarter decline, you know, in EDS to a level that it has come to. And the fact that, you know, you have added stores at an overall level, unlike, let's say, KFC, where you have added stores and revenues are increasing despite uh, uh, decline in ADS. In case of Pizza Hut, that has not happened. What are your medium-term aspirations or, you know, ambitions over here with this brand? Hi, Vivek. <clears throat> so, Pizza Hut, while we've added 30 stores in the quarter, but you would have seen that overall our additions are much lower compared to what we have guided and what we've added in the past. So we are cautious about what is happening on the Pizza Hut. Uh, we also recognize that there's a strong competition which is emerging. Uh, however, we've taken steps in terms of the visibility for Pizza Hut as a brand. We've taken steps in terms of the in-store store experience as far as the consumers are concerned. And therefore, we are confident that Pizza Hut uh, top line and the ADS numbers will come back once the overall macro sentiment improves. And, uh, and we will start to kind of uh, trend in line with the overall category. Okay. Uh, Manish, uh, you know, there is also, you know, concern for your competition uh, that the aggregators have actually, in a way, democratized and the pizza, you know, offerings have gone up quite a bit. In, in such a setup, I would have thought that, you know, uh, that you would have 
you know better chance you know because of whatever but a fatigue or brand fatigue or uh, you know you are a challenger brand so you could have also participated in that where are you on this uh, you know on this uh, issue uh, versus you know the competition and the fact that the market is probably getting a bit fragmented so if you see uh, vivek uh, typically for example uh, uh, post the covid time the local competition uh, virtually got eliminated because of the uh, various constraints that that the overall business was under whereas now we are seeing uh, that is coming back and and therefore uh, uh, the food aggregators uh, have a good opportunity from that point of view overall uh, from our strategy point of view uh, as we said earlier that uh, for example during the hyperinflation time uh, we introduced one flavor pizza and we saw down trading happening within our portfolio uh, we've compensated that uh, through the premium end side we we were also compensated by by reducing the number of offerings that we've had on the fun flavor side and and that's how that gives us the comfort that we will be able to kind of come back on pizza okay got it uh, that's useful and on the kfc side manish uh, likewise uh, the eds at let's say 104k uh, which is uh, which is i think lowest uh, at least in the in the last 12 13 quarters do you think that third quarter captures you know the worst uh, um, and from and and eds should not go down any further or do you still think that things are tough and sorry yeah the vaccine the overall macro environment continues to be challenging one obviously is on the consumer spending part and then on top of that uh, as we've discussed in our comments we've seen some bit of impact on the american brands as well because of the overall uh, global geopolitical situation and uh, we've analyzed our numbers we've seen a very strong correlation between what is happening outside to what is happening with the brand so so therefore we are more in the process of consolidating and kind of uh, making sure that we we kind of uh, grow from here but uh, we will need to kind of uh, see when the macro environment improves and uh, and and it'll take uh, a couple of quarters uh, by the time it's safe like got it got it and last one uh, uh, manish and mr jaipuria you know big picture on thailand how you are thinking about uh, what is the aspiration over here what are what will be the medium term you know uh, thought process uh, in terms of growth and profitability anything that you can talk about now that the merger is uh, now that the acquisition is done so we think from our perspective uh, thailand gives us a good opportunity uh, one obviously it is it is a nation economy it is still not uh, a developed economy as the western world uh, or singapore or for example some of the middle east countries so there is a great scope for uh, for growth in thailand second if you look at uh, uh, from the economy perspective uh, the way the exchange rates and the interest rate environment is it is lot more benign versus what we've seen in india uh, at the same time uh, if you look at the local consumption from uh, from a from a perspective of outside home food consumption the incidence in thailand is sitting at almost about 8 to 9 times uh, in a week and this i'm talking about thailand as an overall country versus let's say if you were to compare that to india uh, given our target uh, population which is roughly about 12 15% of the indian population and that incidence sits at once in 35 to 40 days so from that point of view economically it's in a good zone the growth growth potential is still available poultry is a dominant uh, consumption medium as far as the meat consumption is concerned and that is true with uh, with some of the asian markets kfc is a market leader in that country uh, with with close to almost 1000 plus stores uh, mcdonalds which is number 2 is a distant number 2 at about 25 30% of the store count so so we saw thailand as a great opportunity we also see that within that there is an opportunity to uh, introduce our own brands um, in thai portfolio and and that's the reason we are bullish and and we did the deal and on an overall basis despite all of that it was a great valuation uh, i mean you've seen the multiples that we required the business at so so that is that is where our confidence uh, stems from as far as the thailand deal was got it and just one uh, just one small follow up in terms of margins i think uh, 
that business is about 15% give or take, whereas India margins are about 20% at brand contribution level. Uh, so, what is the you know what is the thought process um, on on the margin bit? So over a period of time, um, uh, we, wait, we are very confident we'll be able to uh, get to the India levels. And please remember that Thailand, as an economy, is highly is highly uh, tourism dependent. And if you look at the data, the COVID impact is still there. They have still not fully recovered from tourism perspective as well. So as the kind of uh, overall tourism recovers, the brand numbers start to improve. The, the leverage would also come in, uh, the positive leverage would also come in for the brand. And therefore, in our view, uh, uh, the, the margin levels should improve uh, from where the numbers are. And again, that is, that is what gives us the opportunity to acquire the business at the multiples that we've managed. So I mean, so I mean, you have to balance it out and and take a holistic view from that perspective, right? Got it, got it. Just a, and you know, a feedback from some investors who have this, you know, worry that the Thailand, uh, you know, for it doesn't in any way represent your concern or whatever the slowing, uh, you know, uh, uh, QSR and and the Venice position in India. So that's just one thing that you know some investors have expressed concerns about. I don't know if you can address it here or not, but yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much. Sure. So we are not slowing down on India, and obviously India is an independent strategy. And it's not that uh, uh, the Thailand acquisition will impact whatever plans or the growth aspirations we have uh, for the Indian business. So that will continue. But at the same time, given the current environment, it's a good hedging bet as well. Got it. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in this conference, Please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, you can rejoin the queue. <coughs> the next question is from the line of Devanshu Bansal from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, uh, wanted to check as in this calendar year also we are targeting uh, uh, aggressive store expansion. Uh, so, uh, are formats like Pizza Hut, Costa Coffee sort of generating uh, enough free cash flow uh, to sort of support this uh, uh, expansion that we are planning to? Devanshu, they are. Uh, obviously, KFC has not changed uh, compared to our model, whereas uh, Pizza Hut has got impacted uh, more than KFC. But please remember, uh, our view is uh, if we are bullish as far as the Indian uh, overall potential is concerned, then we have to continuously invest because uh, this business is a store by store business. You have to build brick by brick, store by store. So it is not that once, let's say, the India potential kind of emerges, we'll be able to kind of say that we can add now 3,000 stores in a year together. So we have to be at it at the same time as we've kind of alluded in the past that we follow a dynamic store addition strategy. So we've kind of tapered down Pizza Hut a little bit. Uh, we've increased KFC a little bit. So if the current situation continues, we will kind of adjust uh, some bit of numbers here and there. But uh, but overall, uh, I mean, uh, our investment is more from a long-term point of view. And we still believe that uh, uh, as far as Indian market is concerned, the long-term potential is huge and, uh, and QSR is underpenetrated and, and therefore we need to invest. Got it, Manish. Uh, and from margin perspective, uh, uh, while there was an SSD decline for both formats, uh, KFC, Pizza Hut, but uh, in KFC we have been uh, sort of uh, able to deliver a relatively better margin performance compared to Pizza Hut. So wanted to check, is there any kind of a difference in operating models for the two brands uh, where costs are more variable for KFC vis-a-vis uh, -vis Pizza Hut? See, the, the leverage impact or the deleverage impact, whatever you may call it, is much stronger on, on Pizza Hut. Because if you look at the KFC ADS numbers, they are much stronger. Whereas Pizza Hut are lower numbers and therefore a small change as far as the top line is concerned impacts the margin more dramatically. So let's say once we are able to cross those uh, threshold levels, um, even Pizza Hut also uh, will kind of get into that zone. But, but to that extent, KFC is insulated. KFC is a better business, obviously. And uh, and that is one of the considerations that we factored when we acquired, when we got the Thailand opportunity, that it was a good KFC opportunity. Uh, and therefore, that was the other decision-making element that we had in our mind.
Got it, Manish. Uh, Manish, can you also talk about uh, the funding of uh, capital required for Thailand? As in, uh, how how where is the capital going to be raised, and what is the uh, 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 interest rate associated with that? So the total um, uh, value of the business was about 1,060 crores, and we've dis we've disclosed that in the silent presentation that we did. Out of that, uh, DIL is investing 340 crores roughly, uh, and that is what we borrowed uh, locally uh, from the banks in India. Um, uh, Temetech, uh, uh, represented by CAMES, uh, is investing another uh, about 325, 330 crores, uh, and therefore they are participating with us at Dubai level. And then there was a local debt which was sitting in Thailand. That is what we've replaced with a lower cost debt now as part of the deal, and therefore that gives the advantage uh, to the local books. Okay. Got it, Manisha. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurabh Kundan from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so is there a way to quantify the... Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Mr. Kundan, your voice is not that audible. Uh, in case of you are using the speaker mode, may we request you use the handset mode, please? Yeah, is it audible now? A bit better than before. Sort of it. Sort of it's slightly better, but if you can uh, move closer to the mic, that'll be you. Yeah, yeah. No, my question was whether if you can uh, quantify the geopolitical impact you were talking about uh, on KFC and on Pizza Hut. Uh, sort of see in the middle of the macro environment that we have in terms of what is happening on the inflation, what is happening on the consumer spending and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, it is difficult to quantify, and therefore, we can draw correlations, and we've seen a very strong correlation between the two. So, uh, so, so maybe we can talk about this more in detail in one-on-one -on -one sessions, but, uh, but, but there is a strong correlation available. Right, right. Uh, so, the second question is on Pizza Hut. Uh, just wanted to know, is there a minimum target committed to Yum, which, which is, is that why the expansion can't be completely paused? I'm not suggesting completely paused, but just theoretically, can it be completely paused? If See, theoretically, you can completely pause it. And obviously, let's say when we work with YUM, uh, there are targets defined, and we've been kind of working with these targets for the last 25, 26 years. And we've never, ever defaulted on those targets. So, so therefore, I mean, that is not such a, such a big worry. <coughs> it's, it's the fact that we believe in the business. It's the fact that we believe in the brand, and that's the reason we are expanding. Okay, so just one last question. Where in the reported PNL is the Nigerian currency impact recorded? It's about 2% of sales, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is it's a good point that you've raised. So uh, if you look at, let's say, a few quarters back, we used to report, uh, I mean, when the devaluation had set in, uh, we had reported this, uh, as discussed with the auditors, as a set in. Whereas now, because it is business as usual and the develop and although not official devaluation, but the currency is still weakening, we've actually merged this with our uh, overall operational numbers. So let's say when you look at our uh, presentation of the numbers, it sits as part of the overall GNA, uh, which is the brand and corporate GNA, which is the difference between the brand contribution and the pre pre uh, indecibita and that's the reason you are seeing the, uh, the expenses at an elevated level, because uh, it has an element of uh, a, a number uh, coming out of Nigerian currency. Right, right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Percy Patanki from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. One quick uh, accounting-related question. If I basically derive your corporate or common costs uh, by uh, deducting the uh, uh, restaurant uh, EBITDA margin from the total uh, company's EBITDA margin, that number around 50 crore is much higher than your usual run rate of around 30 crore. So can you explain that? Uh, so, Percy, as I said, uh, this number uh, accounts for the Nigerian uh, currency devaluation impact also. Uh, so, therefore, uh, that's an exceptional item which earlier used to be uh, below EBITDA, whereas so now… Uh, how it will is, this yeah. continue, Manish? Uh, how many more quarters we will see this unallocated or corporate costs uh, at this inflated level? 
see, I will not be able to predict as to how the currency behaves going forward. No, because assuming that the currency is uh, remaining where it is today, then will you see the, is this a permanent rebasing upwards or it will anniversarize and the cost will come down at some point of time? No, it is. So, because I'll, I'll, let me just give you some numbers so that you're able to understand it better. So, pre the devaluation, the Nigerian Naira to a dollar was roughly around 450, 460, somewhere in that range. Post the devaluation, it got pegged at about 660, 670, whereas currently it is sitting at almost close to 900 plus. So, so it's a very significant devaluation which has happened. Uh, uh, but just to give you a broad guidance in terms of what is the normalized uh, number as far as the GNA is concerned, you can take roughly at about 5% on the current uh, um, uh, top line basis. And this would include whatever currency impact uh, is there? No, no, this is without the currency impact. Okay, okay. Now, my, my uh, uh, question was that supposing if this remains around 900, do you see this uh, uh, extra 20-odd uh, crore continuing uh, 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 into perpetuity or uh, does this anniversarize and come down? I just wanted to understand the accounting uh, of this. Sure. So, if it remains at a 900 level, you will not see a further impact and, uh, and, and therefore, as far as the <laughs> it will revert to the original level and same as the balance sheet. Because okay. we've taken okay. the impact of uh, of uh, 900 at all line levels and, and, and already factored that in. Okay, so this will come down by which quarter? Immediately in Q4 or it will take a couple of quarters for it to come down? You're talking about the currency? Uh, yeah, this extra 20 crore in the uh, corporate costs is what I'm talking about. So, so let me just elaborate it better. So, let's say next quarter, if the currency remains at 900, uh -huh. then you will not see further impact in the books. Okay, so then it will come back to the uh, original 30, 35 crore kind of a number. Exactly. If, let's say, the currency comes down to, say, 700 level, you will see the benefit coming in. If the currency goes to, let's say, 1,000 level, you will see the hit coming in. Understood. Very clear. Uh, secondly, I just wanted to ask on uh, Thailand. Uh, see, it's a good acquisition in terms of the valuation and uh, uh, the good part is that it's a decent margin business already. You don't have to do any major surgery on it. But just wanted to understand from growth point of view. See, KFC is a very, very strong brand, already very high market share in the QSR space. From here on, increasing uh, market share, uh, even if it does, is not going to be a major delta. Secondly, as you mentioned, uh, the eating out frequency is also uh, 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 decently high. So I don't know how much upside uh, there is on that also. And there are many stores also. So in terms of increasing number of stores, I don't know if that is a big lever. So would I be right in assuming that uh, the, the Thailand will not be a very high growth uh, geography for you? Hello? Uh, sorry to interrupt. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the management line has been dropped. Please stay connected while we connect the management line back. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for holding the line. The management line is connected. <laughs> Sorry, gentlemen, uh, we got dropped, so we are back. So, Percy, um, uh, should I continue? Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't know, Manish, if uh, you heard my question, were you able to hear it? So, yeah, so maybe you can repeat, no issues. Yeah, so I just wanted to understand on uh, Thailand, uh, uh, one is that the brand already has a pretty high market share. Secondly, the number of uh, KFC restaurants are also uh, 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 sort of decently high. And thirdly, the number of eating out uh, occasions uh, are also much higher than what they are in India. So, in light of all this, uh, would I be right in assuming that uh, this franchise will not be a fast-growing franchise for you? So, let me explain you the dynamics of uh, Thailand per se. So, uh, uh, as part of the uh, overall diligence and acquisition, we had got an independent market study done uh, in terms of what is the potential for KFC in Thailand, and that study indicated uh, uh, that we can actually double the store count. I'm talking about KFC as a brand and not RD uh, as a company. So if, let's say, there are total about 1,000 KFC outlets in, uh, in Thailand, over the next seven to eight years, we can actually double that count. Uh, so this is what the market study indicates. So therefore, that is uh, one potential. 
Second, if you look at, let's say, when we talk about outside home consumption, which I said is almost sitting at 10 times, this is not the consumer that is coming to USR readily. So let's say, for example, when we talk about outside home food consumption, this would include uh, the street food, this would include the fine dining, this would also include, let's say, if you were to pick up a sandwich from a 7-Eleven or, uh, or let's say a Marks and Spencer for, for that matter. So over a period of time, as the income levels grow, uh, the consumers will keep on graduating and will keep on uptrending to the premium brands and to the KFC because it, 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 it already is a very strong uh, uh, brand there. At the same time, if you see the dominant uh, uh, contributor to the street food also in Thailand is fried chicken. And, uh, and as the consumers upgrade, uh, they would come to KFC and therefore all of that uh, kind of gives us the confidence that uh, from a growth perspective, uh, the, the opportunity is still there. Right, sir. That's all from me. Thanks and all the best. Thanks so much, Percy. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Doshi from Kotak. Please go ahead. Mr. Doshi, your line is unmuted. You can please ask your question. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. My question is on Thailand acquisition and broader framework. Uh, so with this acquisition, you know, international contribution to EBITDA will be over 25% or so. I you know India business EBITDA is depressed at this point of time. But uh, do you have a sort of framework in mind where, you know, uh, or would you keep, uh, you know, consider or evaluate more opportunities in uh, the young ecosystem outside of India? Uh, is there a threshold that, you know, international uh, may not cross 30%, 35%? in the medium term in terms of future investments? There is a strategy, uh, as we said earlier, we are not diluting as far as the India strategy is concerned. And, uh, and, and there's no uh, uh, change uh, as far as the India growth aspiration is concerned. And you would have noticed that there are multiple questions that even in a subdued macro environment, why is that we continue to invest? Because we believe in the long-term potential of this country. Having said that, uh, I mean, uh, Thailand came up. Uh, it was a great deal. Uh, we managed to structure it well. Uh, it was addition to, uh, to to where India sits. It has, it has an opportunity from other brands' perspective also. So, so therefore, we've not laid a framework. Our, our focus continues to be India. Um, so we, as of now, we are not evaluating anything else. There is nothing else on the table uh, to kind of evaluate. Uh, so, so that is where we stand uh, uh, as far as the overall uh, piece is concerned. Uh, thank you. That's clear. Uh, second is, uh, you know, I mean, there is a lot of noise in numbers, geopolitical uh, sort of headwinds as well as weakness. But when you look at your January numbers, uh, SSSG or December, that the base was weak. By any chance, can you give us some color if you were to adjust it for, uh, adjust it for geopolitical uh, headwinds that you probably may have? Uh, is there a sort of a further deterioration in SSSG trends on a, even on a week base or is it similar to what it was in September, August, September or is there any optically improvement in SSSG? So Jay, obviously it is kind of uh, too early to talk about the January numbers. Uh, but overall, uh, uh, as you know, I mean the, the geopolitical events the, that you're talking about. Hello. Yes, uh, we can hear you now. Mr. Doshi, uh, just please hold on a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, the management line is uh, dropped again. Please stay connected while we connect them back. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently holding. We have the management line connected back. Uh, Mr. Thank Jay. you so much. Sorry, Jay, we, we got disconnected now. Sure. Okay, so that, so that was all. My, uh, my questions have been answered. I think you briefly mentioned. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nihal Mahesh Jam from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you so much and good evening. So my first question was that uh, if I look at KFC last quarter, you know, we had the impact of a bit mass where we still delivered a decent performance. And maybe the expectation was that say, despite the base uh, being favorable and the fact you don't have the impact, the performance would have improved. So is it just in your experience the worsening of uh, the macro situation or any other specific factors which has led to say the worsening of the SLG performance for KFC specifically? 
I think it's a combination of uh, macro uh, elements, uh, Nihal. So obviously, uh, in terms of uh, the spending power, in terms of what is happening on the lending side, if you look at the overall uh, consumer debt, it is sitting at almost all-time high. So, so there are multiple macro events which are kind of uh, there. And then, as we talked about, I mean, there's this whole geopolitical event uh, which is there. So, I mean, uh, it's a combination of various macro uh, uh, situations which is kind of impacting the overall performance. Understood. Related question on Pizza Hut. Now, with Clever Funding in the Bay, you did highlight that some of the initiatives that we are taking in terms of maybe increasing the visibility of the brand. What else, in your understanding, at least if you look at the competitor data and the performance, are the missing points which you can improve, which can get the uh, Pizza Hut say back to the trajectory we're seeing say a few quarters back? So, in terms of uh, missing points, uh, Nihal, as such, there are no missing points. But as you know, I mean, uh, the local competition also is kind of uh, uh, getting uh, uh, very significant. And uh, and with Zomato and Swiggy obviously kind of uh, uh, extending their reach and helping the, the local competition, to, to some extent that is also impacting the overall brand. And then, of course, the macro elements that we talked about, KFC, uh, they get applied to Pizza Hut also equally. So, so it is not that uh, the pizza category uh, uh, is isolated category and therefore the macros are not impacting. Uh, if at all, I mean, uh, I would say the traction is, more on non-pizza category than the pizza category. Got that. There's one final question, if I may, that uh, when we look at the dynamics you mentioned about why you went ahead and acquired uh, the KFC operations in Thailand, uh, this kind of a framework maybe even applies to some of the other Southeast Asian countries and not African because you don't have, say, a currency issue here also. So if you apply the very framework, are you then wanting to explore some of the other opportunities available? Or would it be that once uh, the Thailand acquisition in a way fructifies or we see the results will be go ahead and look at the next leg of international acquisitions for us? We have see every country is different. Uh, every business is different. Every brand is different. How they are positioned in the local market is different. And, and, and overall, let's say, for example, obviously, we will not be able to compare uh, what some of the other acquisitions or some of the other players uh, have, have kind of resulted and what their experience is. Uh, so, so our, uh, uh, I mean, we are bullish for the reasons that I've explained on the call earlier, and uh, and let's see how it pans out. As I said earlier, I mean, as of now, we are not evaluating anything else, and uh, and our focus obviously is India, and the focus is to kind of understand and learn uh, the Thailand business, integrate it with the Indian business, and make sure that uh, we are able to kind of leverage on the opportunities which are there in Thai market both from margin as well as uh, the top line and the new brands that I talked about. So, so there, is a, there is an agenda uh, for Thailand as well. Uh, so we are focused right now on that only. Got that. Thank you so much, Manish. I wish you all Sean. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tejesh Shah from Avendis Park. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Manish, uh, you spoke about uh, uh, consumer sentiment being one of the reasons uh, for the challenging ADS for KFC and Pizza Hut. Uh, but uh, uh, surprisingly and positively, we are not seeing the same trend playing out in Costa. So would you say that uh, the competitive landscape has a higher weightage for the drag down there versus, let's say, uh, in something like Costa, where perhaps it is, I'm just assuming it is relatively better. See, coffee penetration versus uh, a pizza penetration or versus a chicken penetration is sitting at a very different level, right? And uh, and we are uh, uh, highly underpenetrated as far as Costa is concerned. Uh, and at the same time, for example, if you look at Costa has a good presence uh, at the airports and high footfall locations. And, uh, and from a travel perspective, uh, uh, the airports are doing well. So therefore, to that extent, uh, Costa is kind of less impacted versus the other categories. So, but how would ADS and penetration? So, is is it that after let's say 200, 300, 500 store benchmark as we go along, uh, the ADS potential for the incremental store actually drags down the average? Let, no, that let me explain to you what I. So, let's say for example, uh, if you look at the presence of Costa Coffee at the airports, for example, right? 
So if you look at uh, our airport performance versus a high speed performance for uh, Costa is very different. So the high speed performance of Costa would mirror what is happening in uh, in KFC and Pizza Hut. Whereas the airport performance for Costa is very different. And the airport, airport uh, presence for KFC and Pizza Hut is much lower compared to uh, what Costa uh, presence is. So that is what I meant. Okay. And uh, second, uh, in, in this quarter, have we closed any uh, closed down any store across different formats? We have closed some stores for Pizza Hut. Uh, as, as, as we've kind of guided in the past, that our store closure target is always under about six seven percent of the new stores that we open, so we are we are well within that. And uh, the vintage of the stores that we have shut down were they opened after the COVID or before COVID? It's a combination of uh, both. <laughs> okay, okay. And and lastly, despite the subdued consumer sentiment that you called out, uh, our store expansion is getting accelerated. So. And, and it also kind of, as you said, that it qualifies your belief in uh, that uh, turnaround is imminent. Any uh, quantitative data that you look at to get that confidence, or is it just a cycle that they're hoping that it will turn around at some stage? See, I agree with you uh, that we are bullish on the store expansion, but we have kind of tapered it down uh, as far as Pizza Hut is concerned, because uh, we are seeing uh, a higher impact on Pizza Hut. So if you remember around the IPO time, we used to talk about even IPO and post that almost for whatever, uh, more than a year, we were targeting Pizza Hut to open almost 100 plus stores every uh, every year. Whereas now we are talking about opening uh, maybe 60, 70 Pizza Hut stores. So we have tapered it down and, and therefore to that extent, we have uh, adjusted the opening numbers. On an overall basis, uh, if you look at, let's say, Costa, uh, we've up the numbers, which kind of compensates for that. On KFC, we've up the numbers a little bit. So therefore, from a port portfolio perspective, uh, what you're saying is right. But within that, uh, we are kind of adjusting the numbers to, to whatever is required to be done. Got it. Uh, that's all from my side, and all the best for coming quarter. Sure. Thanks so much, Dave. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dheeraj Mistri from Antique. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good afternoon. So my question is, again, back to Thailand. Uh, so you have already mentioned the what kind of growth and all uh, you would be envisaging from Thailand, and think it's an immense uh, growth opportunity. So my question is related to funding of that growth. Whether the uh, in, uh, Thailand business is enough cash flow generating business where the, there would be no additional capital requirement would be required or whether it would be self-funded uh, self from Thailand business itself. It will be self-funded from uh, Thailand. And again, uh, as I said, uh, we have to kind of get into greater details with the business. But the models that we worked out, one, uh, as far as the store expansion uh, strategy is concerned for Thailand, they'll be able to self-fund it. At the same time, whatever debt also is sitting in the books of Thailand, they will be able to repay that also from the cash flows that they are generating. So so let's see. We have to, because it's just been about a couple of weeks uh, uh, when we've completed the transaction. Uh, so we have to do some more work. But uh, as of now, it appears that... Uh, we will be able to kind of uh, put Thailand in a self-funding zone. Okay. And uh, for other geography like Nigeria is facing right now a headwind, but uh, in future down the line for other international business, let's say for Nepal or Nigeria, uh, whether there, that would require the future funding from the India's cash flow or it would be again, uh, if there is no enough cash flow generation from that business, we will take a pause on that uh, their expansion. See, even Nigeria and Nepal also, we've talked about in the past that they are kind of self-funding in terms of whatever expansion they are doing. Uh, so Nigeria, we've got into this uh, situation because of the unforeseen and very, very significant currency devaluation. And that's the reason we are talking about some funding. Otherwise, let's say once this stay, situation stabilizes, even Nigeria also uh, will be self-funding only. And, and that is how it was in the past as well. Okay. Uh, so, last question on Pizza Hut. Like, uh, despite if I look at competitors' data, their SSD decline as well as ADS decline is much lower than what we have uh, what we have uh, witnessed. 
So despite fun flavor pizza, uh, we have been uh, kind of losing market share to the market leader. Uh, what kind of strategy you are trying to play uh, apart from fun flavor pizza to increase footfall or gain market share in that uh, pizza ad segment? The overall, uh, uh, as you know, I mean, despite the fact that pizza is the largest category uh, in the Indian QSR space, it is still a growth category, right? And uh, relative to each other, uh, the, what you're saying is right, but there's a strong emergence of local players, and they are also kind of fueling the entire growth in the category. So our strategy is mainly around innovation and value as far as pizza market is concerned, and that is what I have alluded to earlier. Uh, the brand still remains a strong brand as far as the consumer recall is concerned. Uh, the customer experience is great uh, from a dining perspective. Uh, so, therefore, that's what gives us the confidence that we should continue to kind of uh, expand Pizza Hut. Okay. Uh, sorry, but one last question from my side. Like KFC, in this quarter, we have added 50 stores. So, we have witnessed cross-margin expansion on a quarter-on-quarter as well as on a YY basis. But EBITDA margin has uh, contracted a bit. Uh, is this uh, EBITDA margin contraction is purely because of the store addition, what we have done during the quarter, or is there any other factor as well? It's mainly coming out of daily wage steerage because, for example, as you know, and you've seen the ADS has come down and the triple SE has come down while we've managed to maintain the margin. But overall, because of these two reasons, the daily wage also sets in. And that is what then kind of gets impacted as a result for the fixed expenses. And that's how it is. Okay. Thank you. That's it for my side. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shirish Pardeshi from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Mr. Pardeshi, your line is unmuted. You can please ask your question. As there is no response from the line of current questioner, we'll move on to the next. The next question is from the line of Majid Ahmed from SmartSync Investment Advisory Services. Please go ahead. Yes, yes. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is, uh, what's your view on Nepal market? I'm seeing there is a slow growth there in the market, and what's your plan there as well? So Nepal, uh, Majid, as you know, is a small country and has a very limited opportunity. We operate both KFCs and Pizza Huts uh, in the Nepal market. We've got about 25 stores uh, across our brand portfolio. And from an opportunity standpoint, uh, that presents, that market presents about two, three stores a year. So, so it's not uh, a, a huge uh, opportunity uh, versus India. And it gets managed uh, largely out of the eastern region from India. So there are no big overheads that we incur. But on its own, uh, it's a great market. KFC is a very strong brand. Uh, so therefore, it kind of works very well for us. Thanks for it. So the one more question that I have is, uh, what's the view on Vango? Like, there's no any store addition and anything is not happening there. Like, any any thoughts or any thoughts you can give on Vango? So, Vango is a good uh, medium to long-term bet. Uh, and as you know, I mean, uh, the Indian uh, food brands are difficult to scale up because of highly regionalized flavors and highly domesticated flavors. And therefore, uh, Vango, we are building cautiously. So, so there is a value proposition that we are creating with Vango. Uh, and we are kind of optimizing all of that. Uh, in a long term, we believe that as the overall dynamics for QSR play out, uh, there is a strong... Uh, potential for uh, for Indian brands also, and, and that is how we are building uh, Bangu. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shirish Pardesi from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Hi, Shirish. Just, just a quick question. Uh, I think uh, we have been in the business for many years. And we understand the consumer psyche, how it is moving and what is. So we could uh, do a lot of things around Pizza Hut. But I was a bit surprised on the KFC part of the business uh, with the uh, negative FSG. So what is it that, I mean, though the external factors are important, but in terms of value layer, what we have introduced, uh, but this time it has not responded. So my therefore state question is that, is it that the niche 
consumer is not attractive finding a solution for moving to kfc i mean i understand pizza hut will have a problem but but these all factors are not working so what is it more needs to be done shirish uh, see you come from consumer background and you know that the consumer brands uh, take number of years to kind of get built with a particular proposition right so so to your question in terms of what is happening uh, now obviously uh, there is a macro level environment which is kind of affecting kfc as well and that is the reason the numbers uh, are where they are but to your other point from a lunch perspective we introduced the lunch but it will not happen overnight uh, we are bullish that there is a space available and therefore we will be able to capitalize on that space over a period of time uh, but it will get built so we are very confident about it Uh, if you were to look at our Wednesday proposition, we've been at our Wednesday proposition for a number of years now, and that is today how Wednesday has become a very, very sizable contributor to our uh, to our weekly sales. So, so therefore, I mean, from a consumer perspective, you have to introduce, you have to optimize, you have to be at it, and uh, and and that's how we are approaching KFC. <laughs> Shirish, sorry, your voice. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Padeshi. Your line is uh, not clear. We are not able to hear you at all. Hello. Yes, Mr. Padeshi. Sorry, we are not able to hear. Can we move to the next question, please? Sure. The next question is from the line of Latika Chopra from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks. Opportunity. Uh, <laughs> I missed a part of this uh, conversation. Got dropped off. Not sure if it was, uh, you know, uh, considered. Uh, but uh, I had a question on Pizza Hut. Uh, you know, it, the off-premise revenues, uh, you know, been under a lot more pressure than the on-premise revenues. Anything specific that you want to call out here? Latika, sorry, your voice is breaking a lot. Uh, Hello, is it better? It is better. Yeah. Hello. It is better, Ladika. Can you just please repeat your question? Saying for Pizza Hut, it seems the on-premise, uh, you know, off-premise sales actually were under pressure in the quarter versus on-premise sales. Anything specific, uh, you know, that drove this kind of trend? See, if you look at uh, our overall off-premise, uh, has remained uh, at the same level as a percentage to the overall uh, uh, brand sales. So I think uh, the off-premise has uh, has gone up by about one percentage point versus let's say the previous quarter, and therefore there is nothing. It's overall uh, directionally um, uh, that, that the ADS is lower, and it is getting contributed from both uh, channels, which is off-premise and on-premise. Okay, I was comparing it, uh, uh, you know, probably to uh, any other go trend. Uh, hmm. On a why why basis, uh, so that's why I was just trying to understand, uh, you know, why uh, the the share kind of moderated by a percentage point. Yeah. Uh, so because as far as Pizza Hut portfolio is concerned, uh, our trends, uh, if you were to look at, I mean, it's part of our presentation also. Uh, they have pretty much remained the same between off and on premise. Okay. Uh, the second thing was, uh, you know, could you, uh, you know, give us. Uh, uh, Maybe I missed this earlier. Any specific opening targets that you have in mind for FY25 and the split across the core formats? I know this number could, you know, uh, be dynamic depending on the demand situation. But at this point, uh, how sh how are you thinking about FY25 store opening? So as we've said in the past, Latika, we are looking at overall about close to 275 to or maybe 250 to 300 stores. Uh, that's a little larger bracket for 25 also. Uh, and the broad constituent will be about 120 to 130 for KFC, another 70, 80 for uh, 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 Pizza Hut, uh, 50, 60 stores for Costa Coffee. So that's the broad constituent uh, that we are looking at. So at this point, uh, we are maintaining that uh, uh, out plan and, and, and then yeah. keep reviewing it every quarter. Yeah. That's okay. True. Okay, and and the last bit, uh, if I may, uh, you know, uh, I understand there was an impact due to some of those external factors that you alluded to for KFC and Pizza Hut. But in your assessment, if you adjust for them, and you look at the underlying uh, SSG, 
you know what impacted that more was it uh, you know a reduction in average ticket size or was it reduction in footfalls uh, you know adjusting for those external factors to the best possible assessment for kfc and pizza hut and also if you could also talk a little bit about the product mix that would be useful thank you sure so um, uh, so for the external factors that we've talked about it's largely we are seeing very clear uh, correlation with the transactions uh, because the transactions have uh, dipped, dipped to that extent uh, so so that there is a there is a there is a trend and a and a correlation available uh, and that is what has resulted in the overall impact as well so uh, so as far as atc is concerned uh, obviously it is kind of uh, trending better versus the transactions in this quarter All right. Thank you so much. Sure. Thanks so much, Lati. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that was our last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and all the investors and analysts who have been on the call. I do hope that we have been able to. respond to your questions satisfactorily should you need any further clarifications or would like to know more about our company please feel free to contact our investor relations team thank you once again for your time today to join us on this call and participate in our growth journey thank you very much thank you ladies and gentlemen that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines thank you so much